Very good morning to you. Morning, James. Maybe I could start with um, just understanding. Is there, in your mind, is there ever a case to go for go to war? Uh, well, I mean, the cycle of wars that we've seen over the last couple of decades, which the British have been participating in, have all been disasters. So let's talk about the situation as it is. Um, the occupation, the invasion and occupation of Afghanistan was absolutely catastrophic. I mean, it's led to the death of hundreds of thousands of people. Um, it's destroyed the infrastructure. It's de degraded the economy. It's basically created a failed state. And, but you know, that's, a, that's a slight side distraction, because what I'm trying to understand prior to going into the details of Afghanistan and the mistakes that have been made and all of that is to understand there are some who would say, look, we're a small nation. We should never be going to war outside our territories. That's what caused the problems. We should ignore our colonial past and we should simply focus on ourselves and not get involved. And I'm just wondering whether that's your stance or whether you think that there might be situations in which, yes, for humanitarian or other reasons, we have to intervene. Well, I mean, I don't I'm not particularly in favour of saying that we shouldn't be concerned about what goes on in other parts of the world. My concern is that military intervention doesn't bring any of the things that is sometimes claimed to bring. It doesn't bring democracy. It actually leads to people's deaths. It's not something that can actually have a humanitarian side, in my opinion. And I think where you do have major problems which you do obviously in large parts of the world you have authoritarian regimes you have local conflicts you have all sorts of problems globally those problems in the end of the day i mean i'm a democrat and i believe that in the end of the day those problems need to be solved by the people on the ground by the people that they're affecting which isn't always a particularly kind of um satisfying thing to say but i believe that in the end of the day it's the truth OK, but then if, if we if we have a look at what's happened in Afghanistan, however you look at it, and if you say, well, we created the mess. I mean, I think the mess, to be honest, was probably created before we got there. Um, whether we exacerbated or not is another matter. I, I think it's perhaps also wrong to say that we didn't change the infrastructure of hospitals and schools, um, particularly young girls receiving education that they hadn't received perhaps uh, for, for, for decades in that uh, area, hospitals and, and a whole range of infrastructure and, until we walked out and left. But that decision, particularly by the Americans, uh, to leave Afghanistan has now left a position where the Taliban moves forward the rule of law is pretty brutal, if nothing else, and the humanitarian um, abuses are horrendous. Can we look aside from that and say we shouldn't intervene? Well, first of all, just to to um, to sort of uh, make some remarks about you know your first statement. I mean, yeah, you're right. The situation was bad in Afghanistan previously. Uh, and one of the main reasons why it was bad was because there had been an occupation by another power, by Russia, um, which was then opposed by the U by the West, who funded massively the some of the um, uh, Islamic uh, organisations that went on to form the Taliban. So, if we want to talk about the really talk about the origins of the current situation. You have to look at the fact that the US, with other the support from other Western countries, actually funded the very organisations that are um, uh, the precursors of uh, the Taliban. That's number one. Second, you said that um, there's been improvements in the infrastructure during the invasion and occupation. I mean, that's simply not true, really. I mean, if you look across the board, if you look with any sense of balance at any of the statistics by the United Nations or the World Bank or any of the NGOs that have studied the matter, the fact is the infrastructure was massively degraded under the occupation. I mean, I know that there's sort of Tory politicians and some other kind of pro-war people do talk about an improvement in the health system. But I mean, this is just, it's just fiction. Look at the facts. I mean, Afghanistan is still amongst the very bottom on the list of the uh, uh, UN least developed countries in the world. But, and that includes on questions of health. But isn't, isn't, so isn't, isn't really, that because, really, isn't that because over the last few years, 
um, Western politicians, both here and in the US, have decided that they, it's it's a war that they don't want to win. It's not something that's popular at the election ballot box. It's costing them a lot of money, and frankly, it's easier to walk away. Uh, no, not at all. It's not that at all. It's what the priorities of the. I mean, it's been, this war's been going for two decades, led by the West, and from the very start, the money was always spent on the military. It should we never spent, have got involved in the first place what, then? Well, definitely, of course. I mean, this is a country that is war torn has been devastated by a series of wars. And, you know, one of the lessons that we have to learn from Afghanistan, from Iraq, from Syria, from Libya, is that it's not very surprising when you think about it, but when you blanket bomb countries, when you send in tens of hundreds of thousands of troops as we did in Iraq, you know, you right. don't take the country forward. You don't develop Okay, democracy. but then I, I, you, I, I understand. Let me just make this final point, James. What you do do, is you create massive hatred and bitterness of the West. And the reason why the Taliban are so successful at the moment is because they have a huge amount of support in Afghanistan. And that's because people hate the US. They hate the, 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 you know, the vast majority of people hate the results of the invasion and occupation that has taken place over the last 20 years. So, uh, so do you think the West should not have um, uh, responded in any way to the terrorist attacks that took place upon them? No, of course I don't think that. Of course I don't. So, think how that. should they have responded when? Because prior to nine eleven, there had been these terrorist attacks by Al Qaeda and various others, and part of the reason, I suppose, why the West wanted to prop up various um, regimes is because of this pernicious. Um, form of radical Islam that was creating such tensions in the area and uh, whilst one can say look we shouldn't get involved in other people's wars it was beginning to spill over onto our shores and then 9-11 you can you can argue about the response to it I have to say I you know many people will look back at that in history and say uh, Blair and Bush made the most terrible set of errors um, and in particular they didn't have any long-term plan but they felt that they had to act what should they give them the clarity of hindsight what should they have done in response to 9-11 well, f well, first of all, just to just to sort of comment on, on a couple of things you said, I mean, uh, as I say, one of the parts of the history that isn't very often discussed is the fact that uh, the US funded and organized and promoted Islamic fundamentalist organizations, particularly in Afghanistan. And if we want to look back and say, where does this problem come from? One of the aspects of it, I'm not necessarily saying it's the main aspect, but it's an important aspect. The Mujahideen in Afghanistan that is one of the precursors of the Taliban and some of the other radical Muslim uh, Islamic organizations was actually supported by the West as a way of trying to undermine Russia. Uh, and that was at the highest levels. So that shouldn't have happened for a start. The second thing I think you have to say is that um, the response to 9-11 had no logic to it. I mean, Iraq was always the main target. If you look at all the discussions that took place in the um, uh, in the uh, amongst the uh, American leadership and, and actually with Blair involved immediately after 9/11, uh, the discussion was we've got to move on to attack Iraq. Now, Iraq had nothing to do with 9/11. There was never any connection. That was because the um, the Republican leadership at the time was actually incredibly cynically using 9/11 as a way to promote its wider um, uh, uh, and pursue its wider foreign policy objectives. And Iraq had for some time been in the targets of the US. So, you know, there was absolutely no, and, and Iraq was overwhelmingly the, the biggest operation that the US was involved in at the time in the Western powers. Why it had no connection whatsoever to 9-11. To, to so what we need is a foreign policy, which is not based on cynical promotion of geopolitical interest which is what happens in these circumstances. What you need is a foreign policy that is based on diplomacy, that is based on negotiation, that is based on pursuing peace, trying to with, with reduce tensions between countries rather than inflame them. And if, if that kind of policy had been pursued after 9-11, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in now. Perhaps. Uh, I was looking back at some of the footage recently of the uh, Stop the War demonstration, you know, the big record-breaking demo. Uh, was it 2000, uh, Sorry, 2003? Um, I, I consider that maybe that is the point that I realise that democracy in this country is broken. Do you not think if we had record numbers of people out in the streets telling our politicians we do not want this and they went ahead anyway? Uh, this is obviously a decade before Brexit and a decade before all these other arguments mm. of people saying that democracy over here is broken. Do you agree that that is the case? 
I do. I think that was. I think you're absolutely right. I think it was a. It was a very bad moment in British politics. I mean, you know, uh, there was a, suddenly there was a big disconnect between the political process, official politics, Westminster, and so forth, and what ordinary people were feeling, and not just kind of you know a casual opinion, but actually with a great deal of passion. Uh, and I think you know some of the problems we face domestically now uh, since the war have been have been a, a product of Tony Blair's decision to lie to the country, to lie to Parliament, mm. uh, to go behind the backs even of the cabinet and and link up with George Bush to to to, mm. to start these terrible wars. I mean, it was a disaster and we're still paying the price now. We the world, apart from anything else, the world is so much more dangerous place since what is laughingly well, called the war on terror. Well, I, th I think you raise an important point and I guess just finally to you more for time than you probably spend all morning talking but from from my mind I just wonder whether this is kind of a, a sort of longer way of saying the West needs to wind its neck in because this is where the difficulty comes there is a fundamental difference between Western values and Islamic process and Islamic belief and in Islamic treatment of uh, people and women and various other things and, and globalization and Western values are not necessarily something to fight for. Is that something that we now have to get out of our minds, that humanitarian uh, intervention is not something that we can or should be doing in a military form uh, outside of our nation? No, well, I mean, absolutely, I think that, yeah. I mean, clearly, but, I mean, but it doesn't work. You know, we've tried it. It's been tried a number of times in the last 20 years. It has been catastrophic. And clearly, we need to start. And unfortunately, the current government is pursuing the same old policies. It's sending uh, flotillas of warships into the South China Seas to provoke China. We're now put, backing Biden's ramping up of pressure on Iran, more tensions with Russia. You know, they just don't learn these people because they are, they see foreign policy. You know, this idea about global Britain, it's about militarily and aggressively pursuing a kind of post colonial. Um, uh, uh, attempt to push British business agendas in a military way um, around the world. It's incredibly dangerous. And I mean, you know, you talk about Western values. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a big Democrat, but I mean, I, I don't actually think that the foreign policy that successive British governments have pursued this century has been anything that could be could be perceived as being pro-democratic or pro-humanitarian if you're standing in any of the countries where it's been unleashed. So I'd be slightly wary about this idea that, you know, our values are so much more um, uh, progressive than those of other countries. That's not where it look, what it looks like from Afghanistan. That's not what it looks like from Iraq. That's not what it looks like from Libya. That's not what it looks like from Palestine, to be honest. The problem is we're actually trying to, Britain is trying to hang on desperately to some sort of colonial role uh, in, an area, in an era where, thankfully, we don't have any more of an empire. Well, we will certainly, uh, this is a topic that one will never end probably, but Chris, thank you very much indeed for sharing your views and thoughts on this. This is Chris Nynham, uh, Vice Chair of the Stop the War Coalition, talking about what's happening in Afghanistan now that maybe...